Yeah, yeah. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the fifth installment of Hall Wall's Sequester series. Uh, thank you for joining us in the virtual realm. Of course, we wish you were all here. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, we're very happy to be able to share with you in this way. Um, it's, been, it's been a challenge, um, but it's been a great joy to present these concerts in this format um, because it's the kind of programming that we might not have done otherwise. So it's given a really fascinating uh, look into the solo performance format. So um, we've really been enjoying that. And um, I would like to acknowledge and extend our gratitude to the New York State Council of the Arts for their support of Hall Wall's music program and the Cullen Foundation, which has been instrumental in supporting the arts in Erie County and in uh, education in Erie County uh, for several years now and has uh, really had an impact on, uh, on, on the creative culture of our community. Um, it uh, gives me great pleasure to have with us tonight Mr. George Caldwell. Uh, who's been also a fantastic asset to our community. Um, he's worked with a great wealth of historic figures in uh, the jazz world, uh, including time with uh, the Duke Ellington Orchestra, the Count Basie Orchestra, and many others. Uh, so please be sure to check out uh, all of the things that he has on offer. You can find him online at his website. Yeah. Uh, George Caldwell dot com. George Caldwell dot com. George Caldwell Jazz dot com. Uh, so please uh, join me from wherever you are in a warm welcome, Mr. George Caldwell. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'd like to thank Hall Walls for having me. This is uh, this is an unexpected pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this music.
I hope you enjoyed that. That, that was a composition by a, a friend and one of my all-time heroes in, in the world of jazz, pianist composer Donald Brown. Uh, he wrote that tune as a portrait of New York City. It's called New York. And uh, I think it's very aptly titled. Um, beautiful, beautiful composition. I hope I did justice to it. Um, I would like to continue now with a uh, um, Bobby Hutcherson composition entitled Little Bee's Poem. It's um, a tune that he wrote uh, for his son when his son was born.
Little Bee's poem. I have my set list here. I must check with the official set list. Um, so, I will continue with um, a composition of my own. Um, it's based on, well, I named it after my dad used to have a nickname that he called me all the time. And he was the only person that ever called me that. And uh, he used to call me Mocus. And uh, that's the title of this song, Mocus.
I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, another tune that I wrote entitled uh, Elena. And uh, let's check with the magic list again. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, now I will go to a um, um, tune by Bop Trumpet Master uh, Clifford Brown, who was probably one of the greatest jazz trumpet players of his time, and his life was cut short at the age of 25 by a car accident. They were driving to a gig one night, and uh, that accident killed him, and it killed uh, Bud Powell's younger brother, Richie, who was another rising jazz star. But uh, Clifford was, there was something special about him. He was a, he was a very warm, bright spirit, and it seemed that everyone who encountered him loved him. I mean, he was, he was really rising fast. Uh, there's a clip of him on YouTube, uh, I think, is it the Soupy Sales show? <laughs> And he plays, he plays on there, and uh, you, can, you can find it. It's one of those old black and white clips. This is a, um, a tune he wrote uh, entitled Da Oud.
Okay, uh, how are we doing here? So I, I'd like to, to play um, one of my favorite uh, Duke Ellington compositions. Uh, it's entitled In a Sentimental Mood. So.
I hope you enjoyed it. Um, so, uh, let's see. I don't want you to think, guys think I'm watching the clock. <laughs> but um, um, I'd just like to, to just say a few words. The... Um, The state of things in the world today is, uh, uh, oh, well, as, as uh, Kurt Vonnegut used to say in many of his, his books, he would say, the international situation is desperate as usual. <laughs> so I guess, I, I don't know if I've been living, living off the illusion that things were like very nice and normal or things were always kind of a little skewed, and I just didn't know it. And uh, maybe it's the fact that um, in this digital age, anything that happens gets documented very easily and very quickly. So, um, and everybody, more people than, than ever have a voice uh, and can make their voices heard, so it's, it's it's noisier than it used to be. It seems like, and um, so it's it's a little bit to get used to, you know to get used to it. It's, it's you know you have to you have to kind of be keep your head about you, keep your wits about you. But I I sincerely believe that people have been people as long as there is, there have been people on this planet, uh, and certain things are are true of people. Uh, most people would like to uh, spend their lives making a good living, making a good home for themselves and for their children and for the people, for their neighbors, the people of their surrounding areas. And they want everyone to have a good life. And um, I, I guess I, I feel the same way. And, and basically, I think that's, most, that's what most people want. So the, all the chatter that's going on around that tends to distract one from that. And, um, and I, I think it's a good thing that um, it it's, seems to be that people are paying more attention to um, equality, you know. I mean, I was, I'm, I'm originally, I was born in Clarksdale, Mississippi, so I've seen some things in my life and um, things, have, things seem to be focusing in on maybe a little more equality, a more quality of life for all people rather than just for some people. Although the great divide now seems to be more, more well, it's a class thing. I don't want to get into this. I, I, I got distracted <laughs> from what I really meant to say. But I, I, what I would like to say is I think that if people think before they talk and they try to, to approach things with love and with humanity in mind, um, we can deal with a lot of these problems. Uh, the um, pandemic can be dealt with. We can take preventive measures, and I think people are doing more wearing masks, washing their hands, the whole nine yards. But um, as far as, the, the only thing that we have to deal with really is people. So if we can learn how to do that in a, in a forthright, honest, and uh, caring manner, uh, and, and if, if, these, if the people who are here today and uh, have, have arranged for this music to be played, uh, Steve Bachkowski, uh Jack Zuff is 
taking pictures and stuff. They are very caring people, and uh, pe when people are like that, they give me faith, you know, that we will, everything's going to be all right, as my buddy Keith Kennedy used to say. I get worried, he'll say, well, don't worry, George, everything's going to be all right. That's what he would say. And I, I, I believe that that will happen, you know. I mean, there will there'll always be crazy stuff. But if we can maintain our equanimity and uh, search for love, search for practice random acts of kindness, um, and uh, with that being said, I'd like to uh, close this set with um, a, an old composition, and I like to play it on my whenever I play somewhere in the program because I like what it says. And the name of this tune is Taking a Chance on Love. And thank you for putting up with me. <laughs>
Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the music. It's been a while since uh, I played for like real humans. <laughs> Good night, everyone.